Hi, this is Dr. Eric Westman with Adapt Your Life, adaptyourlife.com. Today I'm taking some questions on ketones. And just as background, ketones are energy molecules that the body can use, just like glucose molecules. And they pretty much work in the same areas where glucose molecules would have worked if you had been eating lots of carbohydrate before. So ketones are just energy molecules that you can look at as kind of like glucose molecules when you were eating lots of carbohydrates and glucose was your primary fuel. We focus on the blood glucose a lot. And if you're eating very little carbohydrate such that your ketone levels go up a little bit, that is a condition called nutritional ketosis. So a few things that make ketones confusing is that a lot of doctors were only taught that ketones were bad because we had only learned about nutritional, uh, not nutritional ketosis, but we'd only learned about diabetic ketoacidosis, which is a serious condition that can happen in people with type 1 diabetes. But that's not what nutritional ketosis is. So nutritional ketosis is a range of ketones in the blood that reflect the ketone burning that goes on and fat burning that goes on when you don't eat much carbohydrate. Now what makes it confusing is that in the past you could only check the urine for ketones and now you can check the blood and also the breath. So the first thing you need to do with any ketone question is to identify are we talking about breath ketones, blood ketones, urine ketones and that will help in the answer. So here I'm from R.D. Dykeman at uh, Type 1 Grit. Do more ketones mean more weight loss? Do ketone levels go down the longer you stay on a low-carb diet? I'm going to uh, think that the question it was in regard to blood ketones. So blood ketones, the higher they are, does not necessarily mean the more weight loss. So the um, weight loss comes from the energy balance, actually, of eating fewer calories and burning more calories than you're eating over a period of time. Uh, ketones really just reflect the fact that you're burning fat as your primary fuel. So I would say more ketones do not necessarily mean more weight loss. Um, let me put it another way. I've seen people with great ketone levels and they're not losing weight. And if you have this mindset that I'm in ketosis, nutritional ketosis, I should be losing weight, that's going to be frustrating. So there's, uh, there's fat burning and then there's burning fat off your body, the energy store, which people are trying to do when they do a ketogenic diet for weight loss. Uh, do ketone levels go down the longer you stay on the low carb diet? Well, this is one of those unstudied, uh, conditions or, or, uh, new knowledge is now being developed. So you'll hear people say all of the above. You'll hear some people say the ketones went up, some go down. I think kind of like the blood glucose, there's a range. There's, there will be a range of what normal ketones is when you're not eating carbohydrate. And um, I've seen people stay even with urine ketones for years. And yet the common teaching out there is that urine ketones aren't any good. Well, they actually can be uh, okay and valid to use. Um, Although we think of the blood ketones as the better, more reliable marker. Um, Karen asks, I have followed a keto diet at least five years. Prior to that, low carb, 18 years. I do measure blood ketones. Why is my A1C 5.3? I believe I was born insulin resistant. It seems I should be in the high fours. My CRP is normal. Uh, how does this, this compute? Well, again, here we're in uncharted territory where someone has been a fat burner for a long period of time and the A1C actually we use as a marker of those who are eating carbohydrates. So while we would think that the blood sugar will be low all the time, blood glucose when you're in ketosis, I've seen some people whose blood glucoses go up over what we'd say is the optimal range over 100 or 110. But it, it's transient, and I don't really think that that's harmful at all. So how you compute the numbers that we're told that are optimal from carb eaters and carb burners, uh, how that affects those who don't eat carbohydrate, is really kind of an unstudied area. 
Uh, so don't rely too heavily on those exact numbers. Uh, Liza asks, how do ketones affect energy levels? Uh, that's a great question. I don't really uh, know on a, on a population base, so I'll see people come back to me um, over a period of months to years and um, uh, don't really hear much in the uh, way of people saying at a certain ketone level I feel more energy, although I think that might be possible. I've heard anecdotal uh, folks uh, tell me that. Um, Jefferson asks, so happy you're pursuing this. Uh, would exog exoketones or exogenous ketones, drinking ketones, be beneficial to a growing nine-year-old type 1 uh, diabetic during sports, such as soccer? Would it not help reduce stress on the body demanding fuel for the endurance of a 60-minute game? That's a great question. Um, I hold out that we'll know the answer for lots and lots of different people soon uh, with Jeff Volick at Ohio State doing the latest research on elite athletes. Um, that's just not something I have a whole lot of experience with. I think it would be fine to experiment uh, to see how things work in your child, how your child feels in terms of uh, as long as you're measuring everything that you can, blood glucose would be the main thing in someone who has type 1 diabetes. Uh, that uh, probably I would recommend you to type 1 grit on Facebook to ask other uh, children who are possibly using these other ketone products to see what they would tell you. Uh, Drew asks, is there an optimal ketone level to achieve for weight loss and for health? I don't know. I, I don't know. And a lot of people think the more the better. And, well, uh, I'm not so sure. Um, so we don't really know the optimal ketone level. Uh, the conference that's started at the University of South Florida in Tampa has now uh, solid scientists who are looking at different ketone levels in terms of different disease states. And there may be a certain ketone level that you want to achieve for that. Um, other, otherwise, for uh, weight loss or for general health, I really don't know what the optimal ketone level is. Uh, Pam asks, can one be ketone resistant? That means not efficient at burning ketones. Um, well, I suppose, um, although we're, we've been in a world of, of carbohydrate resistance, is it possible that there may be ketone resistance? Um, certainly, it, when you're adapting to a low-carb, high-fat diet, when you're turning into a ketone and fat-burning machine, I think there is a time period where you gain efficiency we usually think of that as a period of one or two weeks until you can maximally um, then, you know, function at general levels. Um, as a, an aside, in the movie Serial Killers 2, C-E-R-E-A-L, not S-E-R-I-A-L, uh, they keto adapted to elite athletes. And with monitoring, they waited six months before saying that there was no greater improvement in the optimal fat burning so that uh, you don't want to just change your diet and do some strenuous exercise without waiting a period of time. I would generally weeks to months. And if you're really trying to, you know, this in the movie they rode in a rowboat from San Francisco to Hawaii, if you're going to do something like that, then you want to wait a period of months probably to op or even measure your fat burning to make sure it's really, really good. Uh, Susan asks, what ketone level would cause an insulin response? Um, that's a great question. Um, I generally don't think of ketones um, causing an insulin response direct, directly, um, uh, and that it will, is an area for new research, absolutely. Um, Tamika asks, what are, what are your thoughts on being in a cyclical ketogenic diet, uh, meaning, I suppose, eating carbs so that you don't have ketones around and not eating carbs so you do? Um, well, this is a... a an approach that has been used for a while in the bodybuilding world, and I don't know a whole lot about it clinically um, because my um, strength, specific strength, is using the ketogenic diet for general health or for um, uh, therapeutic use in an unhealthy population. Um, there is a book by Lyle McDonald called The Ketogenic Diet that might be a reference for you um, that uh, I've seen the these other kinds of use of ketogenic diets described 
in their, uh, in their different uses, although I don't know much about that myself. Um, well, this is the uh, first of many uh, questions and answers about ketones as we learn more and more about nutritional ketosis and not only the possible therapeutic effects, but also the general health benefits. It's a pretty exciting area to be in. So this is Eric Westman from, uh, on behalf of AdapterLife.com. Thank you.